going on everyone Rainback and we got Monk Suzuma. We got Griffin, we got first place. Actually I'll show you real quick the the scale of it. Um oops, not race yeah, race lock. First place, 19 laps. If you guys want some help on what I did to assure my team first place, message me. I'll hopefully give you some deets on what I did, hopefully to help up the team. I don't want to put it out there. I mean, it wasn't really that tough, but some people could figure it out it's really not that tough. Um, but that puts us at where is it? And why is it not showing me? Oh, right there at the bottom. All four of the last four races we won, and I like to think as a lead, it's helped my team a lot, and I'm really happy that my team is super active. Um, but we got Montezuma, one fifteen. Sped him up just to show you guys his skills, what I would run on him, what I think of him. Personally, I, I'm just on the fence. He's He's got the attacks. He's got two attacks that could definitely be used as an attacker. The 55 damage uh, earth-based AoE that... Or not that one. Not that one. Where is it? Is it this one? Oh, they changed this. It used to be 50. Five. Or is it, is it? Let's just look. Heavy earth damage. Yeah, it looks like forty. Or yeah, it looks like forty. They changed this. This was fifty-five, I think. No, that's not right. They changed his skills. That's such. That's so shitty. God, because it says heavy earth damage and forty-five is. I don't think it's heavy. Or forty isn't heavy. Anyway, we'll get we'll get to what it looks like. Uh, but I definitely like these extra turn skills because. It allows you to not be possessed, and it also allows you to have an extra chance at your super. And I think that this is a great skill, definitely one you want to run. Always, this is probably my first choice because it's free. Uh, you get to run it every time, it's, and it's also unpossessable. And then I run this skill right here, activates all cooldowns on enemy skills, and reactivates his skills um, for two reasons. Because this is great for other Earth Legends that say say there are only a couple that you can't possess but there are other wars where you know that if you can't do a stun or possession this is almost a guarantee on most legends that they will be immobilized for one turn so i like this skill gonna run it and then the two turn possession there also is a one turn possession but i didn't choose to run him as a denier so i didn't choose it outright the the Montezuma's Revenge, which is the one that I just told you guys about, it doesn't do any damage, but I think it can be useful in a lot of situations. Uh, Acid Slime Rain, Poison All Targets, that's the one I already showed you guys. Um, but I want the reason why I chose this rune, uh, this rune um, template, is because I just don't see him as a, a true denier. He doesn't have an AoE deny. He has a possession of two turns and a one turn possession and then the activates all cooldowns and that can be definitely useful. Um, but I look at it like I have Baby Yaga or Baba Yaga. Someone correct me on that. I, I don't know why I didn't think that was or why I was reading that wrong. But I have Baba Yaga who can possess all targets. I have um, a Tomb who can stun all targets. I have uh, Bronte who can stun all targets. As an Earth Legend, there are plenty of deniers. I only have two attackers, and one's Brock Thor, the last race legend at 115. He's really good too, definitely an attacker. Um, he's this is definitely a little different. He's a, he's got a mountain trait. I love that. But again, I he's in two other books. He's in the Dragons book, and there are two great deniers in that book, uh, Frost Wrath and Egg Eater. And then there's a bunch of attackers. And then he's also in the Evil Legions. And the Evil Legions book is stacked. It's probably like the second best book with all. It's got like seven or eight pages, insane amounts of choices. So I really would just rather have him as an attacker with a high damage AOE um, with poison too. Uh, and I'll show you guys some skill, some or some gameplay. I love my Gregors. Mount to zoom in. Alright, so like I said, this is a great skill because it gives you the chance of getting your super. It also makes you unpossessable. And in the Earth Wars now you have to worry about Baba Yaga, and this is a definite threat. Um, I just want to see uh, this man this man gonna make a good well, 40, 42,000 damage to electric enemies. I didn't mean to put electric enemies on here. Uh, maybe this one. Still electric. These are all electrics. Yes, sir. They are. There we go. Dark based. 
Um, so again, the possession is cool. This super is pretty good too. I think it, it might stun all. It definitely poisons and applies damage reduction. Uh, Twenty, About 30,000 damage with the runes I have. I might bump that up a little bit. I might give him two level 8s just so he can wipe any team at his level. Um, but I just want to show you guys the, cho the skills I chose, um, where I'm putting him. Again, it was free for us. We, we had a couple people that obviously sped up the epic breedings. And I used a couple gems on the PvP here and there. Helped on my team to get ahead. Um, he's not, again, he's not that special in my opinion. He's good. He's not that great. Um, so that's the way I chose his runes. Now we will talk about the current Crazy Lab event. Uh, Callisto, first off, he's okay. I mean, he's got an AoE burn. I think a blind and a stun or a daze and a stun. So he's got good skills, but to rank this legend up, you'd have to have several of him. He's not breedable. You're better off ranking up a breedable legend, like, or a breedable epic, like, uh, even Scorch Peg at level 105 is probably better than Callisto is, and he's also fire, um, because he's got healing skills. Uh, Hasai, this is probably an underrated legend. He's a pretty good support legend for a couple reasons. He's got um, this one right here, uh, gives a 30% shield to all targets and removes all negative status effects. That's always good, like like uh, legends get blinded and dazed a bunch, so this is always good. Um, plus you're giving shields, so this is definitely big. Uh, you also have this one if you know that you're not gonna have any problems. Um, gives a 30% shield. If you know that you're about to go down and say you wanna have one last chance for your attacker to get, an, uh, to wipe the team, 50% uh, shield, precision, and damage boost to an ally. And days a blind and damage reduction. He's got decent support. Skill. Oh, and a stun skill. He's just got terrible stats. He's really not, and he's hardened, so he's really not that bad. Um, I definitely, I think I have this legend. Um, the legends, the legends in this in this little maze, they're actually not bad. I like Hercule as well. Uh, huge tanky life, insane power, just a terrible speed. Uh, he's immune to freeze. He also is immune to possession because he's got an extra turn skill, which I would definitely recommend running. Uh, right there. Heals, gains stamina, loses negative status effects, and an extra turn. Uh, that's great. And then he's got an, an AoE magnetize and an AoE magnetic attack. This will, I guarantee, wipe any team, even if you. I would actually consider running two speed runes on this legend and one strength rune because an AoE. And one good strength rune. One good strength rune on this legend. And the AoE Magnetize and the AoE Magnetic Attack might wipe most teams. If you have a good, like a 7 or 8 maybe. Um, but at, at level 100, he's definitely he's definitely a good legend. Uh, he's also got a 75, yeah, 75 damage attack that gives him a shield. For, for some reason, it gives him a shield and it's 75 damage. And then a return damage, but it's only 20%. You're not really going to need that skill. Um, I'd probably run something else that gives more damage. I got 60 attack right there. Uh, Dr. Victor, my hands down favorite legend in the race, in the in the maze, but you should know that he's last. You probably won't be able to get him if you just go out of your way in the usual events. Where do I have him? I love this legend. He's my favorite in several books. He's in Underworld, uh, Evil Legions, and something else. But he's in, he's in a lot of books that I think he was worth ranking up. Um, so I put him to 110. But he's definitely got some standout skills. And AoE, this is why I just I like him just a little bit more than Tempest. Because Tempest has an AoE Daze. And where they both have an AoE Stun, which is his go-to best skill. Right meow. Right here, AoE Stun. Definitely the first skill you're going to want to run. Fantastic, because if you're going against a Bolt, you're going to have to immobilize him. And this is the way to do it. Um, and then you also have the AoE Burn and Blind. And in my opinion, I would rather have an AoE Burn and Blind than an AoE Daze. So... Yes, he's lacking on health, but his speed and strength are amazing. He's also got a very heavy attack, uh, moderate thunder attack. I think that I don't run those. Yeah, I run because I have him on all speed. I run, I run one attack, and then the AOE days, AOE stun, and then the uh, forty percent stamina skill. Um, so that's just where I'm at on this. You probably won't have the chance. The sub glitch is also fixed. Sadly, uh, I wasn't sure if they were going to fix it because social point is really slow. Um, and then, um, my breeding event log, oops, because I'm sure people are curious because I've been speeding up a couple of them. I've had no luck. <laughs> I had good luck with the last event and the last couple of breeding events. I have had no luck getting Anton Acorn. Um, I've also had, like, I've got one Bond Unknowing that was like the first one I bred. So two, four, six, eight, 
10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28. I'm 30, about 30 attempts, and I've got one Vodjanoi. And Vodjanoi sucks, so I'm not really pumped about getting an extra one of him putting in the 105. Um, I don't really want a corn at Acton at corn, um, but I do want more guava juices, so I'm breeding, I'm trying to breed him. But I want to kind of, I kind of want to get Granoi for you guys. I'll just put him to 100 to show you guys his skills. He's kind of interesting. Um, and then this is not worth it. Definitely not worth it, guys. You're better off just not spending the $20 and buying a, a Dr. Vector next time he goes on sale. Um, this also, uh, Haxter and Lumuna might be worth it. Kimmelgus is not great. So I wouldn't push for that. And then the last breeding quest will probably come up in two days. I might push for Tula or not Tula Kahu. I might push for uh, Granola if I end up getting Tula Kahu. Uh, definitely for you guys too. Uh, last thing, huge, biggest thing Social Point has done for the community that isn't this bullshit right here. Oh my God, Social Point, what were you thinking? Where is it? The, <laughs> you are entered to, uh, you're entered a drawing which gives you the amount of gems you just bought, possibly. Like, that's a sh shitty event. Like, I understand that people are going to occasionally buy gems, but if you're going to make an event, people want feasible, tangible awards. People don't want to see, oh, I'm going to have a chance to get more non-tangible items like gems, but you're not you're not winning any events. In the last ones, they were doing, like, you got a free Annihilator, and then you got a free, uh, um, God, what's his name? I love him. He's my art, my go-to fire legend. God damn it, me! Come on. Why can't I think of his name? Agursus. Why am I retarded? Anyway, Agursus. He was awesome, and you get ranked up cells, and you get food and stuff. A, a couple gems, or not gems, a couple uh, rooms, which was cool. But this is like you—you you have a chance of winning gems if you buy gems. Retarded. All right. Last thing. Huge news from Social Point. This is going to be the probably the biggest thing that comes out in a couple months. They finally are adding a huge habitat where you can put all of your legends. They won't generate gold, but you no longer have to. I have I have been deleting legend or epics and rares and things that I can't use anymore because they're taking up all my space for all my new ones that I want to try out. I want to see what they're good. It just sucks knowing that now you can hopefully you can finally put all these legends that you can hatch into your whatever this is going to end up being uh, monster vault the monster vault is is going to be awesome you can put a bunch of legends in there epics rares whatever you want um and they won't generate gold but you can pull them back and forth so say you want it you can use them anytime too so even if they're in the vault it doesn't matter you'll still be able to use them in war and your pvp team this is amazing i'm so pumped they're doing this because now i can finally just breed it because now i just have a bunch of you guys have seen my inventory you guys saw it in the beginning of the video what am i supposed to do with all of these i mean i'll probably never be able to hatch all of them but there are some couple that i'd like to have um access eventually but i have no room to put them so finally this is going to be great um so that's kind of really all i had for you guys today i wanted to show you guys mount tezuma and his average